What's up, everybody? We're back. Another new episode of the Last Week Podcast. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for listening. Uh, we go over things like cryptids, ghosts, UFOs, conspiracies, nerd stuff, and so much more than that. Again, as always, thank you for listening. Uh, today is Memorial Day, so I figured I'd hop on, and I've actually been wanting to do this story for a while. So I figured there's no better, no better day to do it than now. Uh, given the, you know, given the day, so I hope everyone's having a, a good Memorial Day, I know it's not kosher, I, I guess you'd say, to say Happy Memorial Day, but um, obviously it's a day of remembrance and a day of um, just thinking about those that didn't make it back, and that's important to to really know, it's not about, you know, cookouts or hanging out with family and friends, it's about remembering the ones that didn't come back and can no longer do those things so again thank you for listening um today we're actually going over something that i had never heard about uh until or maybe two three months ago and it just it caught my attention and i can't believe i never heard about it i can't believe most people probably have never heard about this either uh today we're going over what's called the atomic veterans and apparently because uh, if there's anyone left that actually trusts the government, this will pretty much squash that. Um, and as far as I know, I just have the information for the United States. I'm sure other countries did this. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm pretty sure uh, the UK has done this. Um, I'm pretty sure that's actually what I saw first were members of the UK Atomic Veterans. Um, but I looked into it, and apparently it's a lot more widespread. Uh, this popped up on a video I saw on, U- on uh, YouTube. Uh, some guy had actually interviewed a couple of these older uh, older World War II vets, and they were called atomic veterans. That led me down a rabbit hole and all this stuff. So this is incredibly interesting and really disturbing and powerful. So if you don't know about the atomic veterans, definitely listen, definitely share it. You know, give people this information so they so that they know and hopefully something like this won't happen um ever again so jumping in uh the national association of atomic veterans was founded in 1979 by the late orville e kelly uh, of burlington iowa for the purposes of allowing the u.s atomic veteran community to speak with a single voice to their inability to get their fair hearing related to their developing radiogenic health issues that may have uh, precipitated by their exposure to ionizing radiation while participating in a nuclear weapon test detonation or a post-test event. From the beginning and to date, we continue to pursue our purpose to this dedicated cause. So that's actually from the NAAV uh, National Association of Atomic Veterans website. And basically these guys these veterans again these stories aren't told um and it's actually a very good reason to that these men were sworn to secrecy up until uh 1996 i want to say i'm checking my notes real quick uh yeah 1996 the u.s congress repealed the nuclear radiation secrecy agreement act which rescinded the atomic veteran oath of secrecy thus allowing atomic veterans the opportunity to recount their stories of their participation in nuclear weapon testing and post-test event activities without legal penalty penalty. So sadly, these guys were part of nuclear testing. That's obviously where the atomic part comes in. So from about the time frame of 1946, uh, 1958, that, that kind of time frame, and before that, obviously, uh, before the end of the war, uh, whenever we dropped bombs on Nagasaki and uh, Hiroshima, um, the, these these guys were all involved with this. And they were sworn to secrecy until 1996. So, again, this is just some insane information. So, these guys uh, were basically, they were responsible for Actually, they weren't told, but they were responsible for showing the effects of the human body on some atomic testing. 
they were sitting in post event, like whenever we would test a bomb, they were sending some of the people were sent in to clean up, uh, to do certain things to test the area. Um, after we dropped the bombs on Japan, uh, members of this group were sent in to do tests to clean up and things like that. So these these vets are sitting there just taking all this radiation, which of course the study and the knowledge of that wasn't the greatest at this time frame in history. So that's kind of understandable as to why some of that was kept secret and kept away. But at the same time, they were sworn to secrecy. So they were aware that something bad was happening. So, you know, again, the government. So do with that what you will. But continuing, so the Atomic Veterans, and the main focus of this this story that caught my eye, and that's understandable that these guys go in and do certain things like testing and things of that nature, but there was certain tests that were done, like in the atoll reefs and um, nuclear tests, you know, at sea, in the air, underwater. Um, anyone that's like slightly a history buff or... Realistically, anyone should have seen this footage by now, but the classic footage of nuclear tests at sea where you have this big explosion and, you know, massive amount of water, mushroom cloud coming up, and there are vessels out there, you know, right in front of this, in front of this explosion. And most of us, you know, are told or we assume that these ships are stationed there to test the effects of the explosion and radiation on military vessels to use against our enemies so on and so forth normal military tactics however what has been revealed is that there was around 20,000 plus soldiers involved in these tests and they were not told of what was going to happen they those ships if you i tried to actually use a thumbnail from one of the videos you can look them up on youtube just look up uh, nuclear tests at sea and you'll see the ships are out there the ships were full of soldiers and it just blew my fucking mind that these guys these young soldiers they were just they were let out onto the decks told to cover their eyes and they set off these nuclear tests on the water so you have this big explosion and some of the remarks from the soldiers and again, you can look again. You can look up these videos. Obviously, I can't put them in here because of copyright issues. But you can go to YouTube, look up Atomic Veterans, Atomic Veterans Speak Out, so on and so forth. And some of these uh, vets were saying just the craziest things. I mean, they were sitting on the decks of these ships as this nuclear bomb was detonated beneath them. So uh, some of them were saying. You know, there was this great big flash and we were told to cover our, eye, our eyes with our hands. But if you opened your eyes, or not not if you opened your eyes, sorry, through your eyelids, when the flash went off, you could see through your hands. You Like they could see the bones and the blood vessels, basically like an x-ray. So the radiation was so intense, it basically gave these soldiers x-ray vision for a moment. They could see their, ve their blood vessels, their bones, their tendons all of that through their hands and of course when they were told it was safe to look you know these guys were again this is just so so crazy to me they were talking about how they could look straight up and the cloud wasn't the mushroom cloud wasn't over there or away from them it was directly above them so i mean i couldn't imagine looking up and seeing a legit mushroom cloud billowing and going up above you as like irradiated water is pouring down all around you uh you know basically it's just the craziest situation uh so that's what these guys went through like they weren't told they weren't notified i mean they were basically used as test rats and uh some of the veterans that were on the video were basically saying there was around twenty thousand men in their group uh that was part of these tests and as of today, something like 18,000 of them have passed away. Um, and this is just World War II vets. Something like 18,000 of them have passed away. And most of, if not all, had some type of cancer issue. 
or tumor issue or, you know, something caused by radiation. Basically, they had some type of radiation poison. So when you really look at that as just the one of the saddest things and the government knew that it was not going to be good, they knew it was bad, they still did it, and they basically willingly poisoned and guaranteed death for, you know, 20,000 plus people. And that was just that one section. Uh, the Atomic Veterans, National Atomic Veterans Association website states that there's over 195,000 atomic veterans worldwide. So again, that's people that worked on cleanup, people that were sent to Japan directly afterwards, uh, people that were obviously on those ships, uh, people that worked on secret projects that were exposed to the radiation during the construction of the bombs and other projects as well. So <laughs> here we are, and who knows how many of the, you, the numbers haven't come in. Um, I didn't see any evidence and numbers on those 195,000 uh, people, the atomic veterans that were still with us. So, again, just from that one video I watched, 18,000 plus of the 20,000 or so people have already passed away. I don't understand they're World War II vets. They're aging anyway. But that still seems to be an incredibly high number. Um, and for all, and for at least, you know, a solid 90% of them to have some type of radiological issue is just, it baffles the mind that, man, it's just, it's, it's incredibly sad that people that sign up and volunteer to go defend their country are basically used as test mice and they're basically sacrificed for their country just to gain some knowledge. Um, it was completely, they didn't need to be there. There was no reason for it. They could have saved 20,000 possible lives. Because, um, I mean, you're not going to gain anything. <laughs> I understand you want to test the effects. But at the same time, you're not, uh, it's going to hurt people. Like, you know it, that's what's going to do. You know, you don't have to test it on humans. <laughs> you, it's going to be bad. Um, and there's other ways to go about it, too. I mean, as sad as it is, and I don't want, you know, vegans or whoever jump on me, you could have used uh, animals as experiments. You know, things were more lax back then as far as regulations. So, I mean, and again, I'm just saying that. I'm not saying they should have put a bunch of cows on the ship or whatever. You know, so don't get your panties in a bunch. I'm just saying there's other ways to go about it than to basically sacrifice 20,000 people. So... I mean, there's not a whole lot of information on that, even though the Atomic Veterans Secrecy, Oath of Secrecy was rescinded in 96, there's still not a lot known about it because still not a lot of people, and I mean, that video, it, it even announced, it, you know, it announced 20,000, but the, their website basically says most of these people have no idea that their Oath of Secrecy is probably, they probably have no idea that the Oath has been rescinded. They're sadly just wasting away. Uh, they have no idea about, you know, monetary benefits, obvious health care benefits they can receive. And, you know, that's another thing. <laughs> like, if you're going to rescind it, notify these people. You know, let them know. Uh, and it's just, it's just a big cluster. You know, it's a horrible situation, a horrible, you know, decision in U.S. history. And the fact that it was kept secret for so long, while these men and women, mainly men, I would assume, given the time, but I'm sure there are women involved as well. But as these people just wasted away, uh, not knowing if, you know, they were going to live past a certain age or anything like that. So, you know, we're surrounded right now with conspiracies, given the coronavirus and the fact that it was, in my opinion, clearly manufactured and directed at a certain uh, a certain age group, more than likely. Um, because, again, I don't want to get on coronavirus, but honestly, you know, we're clearly being lied to. It's clearly some situations that are not true. Clearly fake news, whatever you want to call fake news. But, uh, and just a quick tangent. Okay, one thing I heard the other day, some Tyson chicken plant somewhere had 600 positive cases right, in one facility, but none of these 600 people had symptoms, 
And I understand some people can be asymptomatic. I understand that. That happens, you know. But for 600 people in the same place to be asymptomatic, now I'm no doctor. I'm a paranormal researcher. So I have no honest truth. I could be speaking completely out of my ass. But to me, that just seems absurd. You can have someone come in and basically say, hey, you're sick. You have a virus. I know your body isn't telling you. You know, your body is your natural defense mechanism. It's supposed to alert you when you have bad things going on. But your body isn't telling you in any possible way you have this virus. But I'm telling you that you have this virus. Again, B, that makes no sense. I mean, when you could, when you think about DNA, you know, DNA differences, blood type differences, health differences, you know, who, you know, of those 600 people, who was overweight, who was white, who was Latino, who was African American, who was, you know, it for 600 people to be affected with the same with or with the virus, and it not show up symptomatically in any of them, to me, just sounds far fetched. So. You know, be that what you will. That's my coronavirus spin on this week's episode. <laughs> so I'll leave it at that. But anyway, again, there's not a lot of information out there about these atomic vets uh, because it is just kind of a new thing that's being talked about, even though it's rescinded in 96. Uh, so feel free to do some research um, if you want to get into it. Obviously, I just wanted to hop on here on Memorial Day and do this episode. Um, I figured it really needed to be done. We'll, I promise we'll get out of the coronavirus and stuff like that. We'll get out of it. We'll start doing, you know, more cryptids and ghosts and UFOs and all that happy paranormal stuff and not so much of this stuff. But this episode needed to be done because no one knows about this. Um, I have not met one single person that actually knows about this stuff. Um, it's a perfect day to share this. Perfect time to make sure people know and people are aware of what's really happened, what's happened in our history, and things that we're never going to be told about unless we actually pick up a book or actually go looking for this information. So that's what I'm going to leave you with today. You know, get out there, learn for yourself. Don't trust the TV. Don't trust the computer. Don't don't even trust me because my, maybe my information is bad. I try to give you the most truth and best information I can. But, you know, I can only go off also what's the information that's out there. I try to sort through it for you. And again, I try to be as truthful as I can because that is our goal here to be the truth. You know, be the light. Get us through the darkness. Um, you know, I'm just a little podcast. I'm not going to, you know, put myself on any kind of pedestal or anything. But that is our goal with this podcast, with the blog, to give you information that you don't know about. Um, that's why we're not, we don't usually do things like Bigfoot and mainstream stories, stuff like that. Um, you got to find out the truth, find out the little nuggets that are out there and get it to the people. So I'll quit rambling. Uh, today's episode is going to be a little bit short, but again, it's a special Memorial Day episode. So as always, thanks for listening. And with it being Memorial Day, please do share this info, info share this episode, like, throw a like on it, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, check out the blog. We're trying to get back into that, but everything's slow right now with coronavirus. So, again, as always, thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next episode.